In this video, I'm going to show you the addition rule, which will help you to find the probability of the union of two events. In this example, you are observing customers at a coffee shop. You observe 100 customers and notice the following. 60 customers put cream in their coffee, 50 customers put sugar in their coffee, 40 customers put both cream and sugar in their coffee. How many customers put either cream or sugar in their coffee? Now, I know since my question has the word or that I'm looking for the union of the two events, putting cream in your coffee and putting sugar in your coffee. Some of you may have already thought about this problem and here's what you may have done. Maybe you looked at this and thought 60 people put cream in and 50 people put sugar in. So if I add them, that should give me how many people put cream or sugar in. So 60 plus 50 gives you 110 people. Now, maybe you didn't notice this, but this answer is not correct. One of the main reasons I know this can't be correct is because I only observed 100 people. I can't count 110 people putting cream or sugar in when I only observed 100 people in the first place. It just doesn't make sense to have a number bigger than 100 in this situation. So that answer cannot be correct. Now you're on the right track with wanting to add those two numbers, but I'm going to show you why that's not correct and how we can fix this so that we never make this mistake again. So pay attention. I am going to put all of this information into a two-way table. I always think it's helpful when someone gives me a verbal description to put it into a two-way table or into a Venn diagram just to help me visualize it better and see what's going on. So we're going to start by putting everything into a two-way table, which I've already set up, but you should be able to set this up on your own. So first I was told that there's 100 people total. So I'm going to put 100 in the bottom right box as my grand total. 60 people put cream in their coffee. So I'm going to put a 60 in the total under the cream column. 50 people put sugar in their coffee. So I'm going to put a 50 in the total in the sugar row. And 40 people put both cream and sugar in their coffee, so I'm going to put a 40 in the box that corresponds with cream and sugar. Now I can fill in the rest of my table using what I know about two-way tables, how everything needs to add up to the total. So if 50 people put sugar in, then 50 people did not put sugar in. If 60 people put cream in, then 40 people did not put cream in. If 40 people put cream and sugar in, then 20 people put cream and no sugar in. If 40 people put cream and sugar in, then 10 people put cream and uh, put sugar and no cream in. And then if 10 people put sugar and no cream in, then 30 people put no cream and no sugar in. All right. Now that I've figured this out, let's take a look at what we originally were thinking. What we were thinking at first was we could add the 50 total in the sugar row with the 60 total in the cream row, and that would give us the total people that put cream or sugar in. Now, the reason this is not correct is because as you can see, when I add up my total in the sugar row, which is 50, and my total in the cream column, which is 60, those two totals have an overlapping amount. As you can see, my circles are intersecting in this box with the number 40 for cream and sugar. So that means that the total of 50 is including this amount of 40 people and my total of 60 is also including this amount of 40 people. Now it does not make sense to count those 40 people two times. We don't want to count them twice. We only need to count them one time. So what we can do is we can still add 60 and 50 together but since the 60 includes these 40 people that put cream and sugar in and the 50 also inclu includes this 40 people that put cream and sugar in we can just subtract out one of the 40s to make sure that we're not double counting them. So I can still add 60 and 50, but I have to remember to subtract that overlapping amount of 40 to get the correct amount. So 60 plus 50 minus 40 will now give me 70 people that put cream or sugar in, which makes more sense. One, because it's less than 100, and also because I have 30 people that aren't putting cream or sugar in, which adds with the 70 people who are putting cream or sugar in to get the 100 total people. So what we can learn from this is that whenever we find, want to find the probability of the union of two events, we can, we can add the probability of event A with the probability of event B, but we always have to subtract out the probability of A and B which is what we did here. We, sub we took the probability or we took the amount of people 
who had cream in their coffee plus the people who had sugar in their coffee minus the people who had cream and sugar in. That's exactly what we did. So now I'm going to show you an example where you might use this for a probability. In this example, Josie will soon be taking exams in math and chemistry. She estimates that the probability she passes the math exam is 0.9 and the probability that she passes the chemistry exam is 0.8. She also assumes that the results of the two exams are independent of each other. What is the probability that she passes at least one of the exams? When I see the phrase at least one, I know that's talking about the union because one other way to think about the union of two events is we're trying to find the probability that at least one of the events is true. And the two events we're looking at, A and B, are A, passing the math exam, and B, passing the chemistry exam. So I'm going to start by writing down the information I was given in the problem. First, I was told that the probability of passing the math exam, which we're calling event A, is 0.9. I was also told that the probability of passing the chemistry exam, which we're calling B, is 0.8. We were also told that the two exams are independent. And that's all we were told. So since I'm looking for the probability of the union of A and B, uh, a and B, so A union B, I can look over in my formulas and I know that the formula I'm going to want to use is the addition rule because that helps me find the union of two events. Now the good thing is we do already know the probability of A, so we have that part of the formula. We do already know the probability of B, so we have that part of the formula, but we're missing the probability of A and B. That was not given to us in the problem. So now we need to think of another formula or look at our formulas and see which one will help us find the probability of A and B. Well, the only other rule we have for the probability of the intersection of two events is the multiplication rule, which says the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. Now this rule can only be used if the two events are independent. Luckily, these two events are independent, so we can find the probability of A and B by multiplying the probability of A with the probability of B, which is 0 0.9 times 0 0.8. And 0 0.9 times 0 0.8 gives us 0 0.72. So now that I've found that missing part of my addition rule formula, I can plug everything in to find the probability that she passes at least one of the exams. So I know the probability of A is 0 0.9 plus the probability of B is 0 0.8, and then I can subtract the probability of A and B, which is 0 0.72. And if I do that, 0 0.9 plus 0 0.8 minus 0 0.72, that will give me 0 0.98, which is the probability that she passes at least one of her exams. And you would have noticed if you forgot to subtract the 0 0.72, you would have gotten a probability that was greater than 1, and you know a probability cannot be bigger than 1. So you would have immediately known that you forgot to subtract out the probability.